Hello everyone, this video is going to talk about resonance and speed of sound. Let's begin. Resonance is the natural frequency at which a solid object vibrates. So what does this mean? Well, if a bell rings, it only rings at one frequency. It just happens to be at the natural frequency of that particular bell. The ringing of a bell is the same thing as saying the resonance of that bell. Okay. So if this particular bell resonates at 250 hertz, that means the bell rings at 250 hertz. And remember, hertz is just frequency, okay? So ringing bells is the same thing as saying resonance, if that makes sense. Now, we don't have to strike the solid object to get it to ring. If we place an object near a wave at its natural resonant frequency, it will cause the object to vibrate. So if I have my bell and I bring it close to a source that is vibrating at 250 hertz, let's say I have a fan, okay, and I have air blowing this way, and that air is blowing at 250 hertz, okay? And I bring a bell, which again, here's my really horrible drawing of a bell. There we go. And I bring it towards this air. Now remember, this bell, this particular bell, resonates, rings, or vibrates, all meaning the same thing, at 250 hertz. So all I have to do is bring this bell towards and close to this air that has a 250 hertz frequency, and my bell will ring. I do not have to strike the bell for that to happen. All right. Now, when we talk about bells, that's a good thing. Resonance are awesome. We make beautiful music with those bells. Residents can also be a bad thing, as was for the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Tacoma, Washington on November 7, 1940. Now at the time, uh, this bridge was constructed. It was the third largest suspension bridge on Earth. It was over a half a mile long, and had only been in operation for four months. Unfortunately, during this day, uh, it was a very small valley and there was a lot of wind going through it. And it just happens that the wind blowing through had the same natural frequency as the steel and concrete of this bridge. That's because the structural engineers did not calculate uh, to make sure it was not a naturally occurring frequency. There's a way to do it. We are not going to go into it. That's much more uh, physics related math uh, than our class covers. So on November 7th, the morning of November 7th of 1940, people woke up and unfortunately, this is what they saw. Now this lasted for about an hour. The period was roughly five seconds and uh, there was a structural engineer. You can kind of see him walking out. Uh, actually, I think that's past, he already did that. Uh, he went out there and he was like, yep, this is bad. So he left and it kept swaying back and forth for a little bit longer, and then after about a total hour of this doing this, uh, the entire bridge collapsed. So, a lot of money The car the had been abandoned earlier. No one was injured in the whole affair. However, a small dog... There we go. Okay. So there it is, Swain. Let me fast forward a little bit, and you can see the collapse of the bridge. All right, so again, resonance is not always a good thing. That's why we have fancy formulas. We train engineers very well. Uh, we learn from past mistakes. And we don't make these mistakes anymore. Now, you are all familiar with this formula already, except I presented it in a different format. I presented it as wavelength equals speed divided by frequency. That is the exact same formula as speed equals wavelength times frequency. Remember lambda, this guy. That is wavelength. So the speed of sound is a constant and is dependent on the type of medium. Okay, that's the big key here. Speed of sound depends on the medium it's in. If it's in air, as we've talked about, it's 340 meters per second. Okay, if it's water, speed of sound gets higher. If it's up in the upper atmosphere or close to space, speed of sound gets slower. It doesn't stop, but it gets slower. Okay. So let's look at an example. Speed of sound in water is not this. Okay, that's an error from a previous whatever. That's not right. The actual speed of sound in water is 1,482 
meters per second. Okay, that is the correct speed of sound in water. What is the frequency of a wave with a wavelength of 15 meters? All right, so let's see. I have speed, 1482 meters per second. I have wavelength, it's 15 meters, and I want frequency. Okay, so speed equals wavelength times frequency. Frequency equals speed divided by wavelength. So frequency equals 1482 divided by 15, and that equals a number. And that equals 98.8 hertz. Okay, so that's the frequency of that particular sound. A 750 hertz sound has a wavelength of 0.97 meters. What is the speed? So speed is we don't know. Frequency is 750 hertz. Wavelength, which is lambda, equals 0.97 meters. Speed equals lambda times frequency. So that equals 750 for my frequency times 0.97 for my wavelength, and that equals like 740 something. 727.50 meters per second. Okay? Hopefully that math is not too complicated. Again, it's the same formula that we've been using for wavelength. All right? Just asking for the different variables. We gave you two, you got to find the other one. Ernst Mach, next geek of whatever. He was pretty cool. He came up with the Mach number. So those of you who like military planes or the Concorde, uh, you would know them as like Mach 2, Mach 3, uh, and what have you. He was born in Vienna, Austria. He has a PhD in physics. Uh, he was very sought after. He's a brilliant man. Did a lot of work with wave particles uh, and the inertia of stars. He did come up with the Mach number. Uh, it's just a simple ratio. And what that means is um, it's the speed that your object is traveling out. So let me go to the next one. Okay, so the ratio is the object speed, so how fast your dealie is going, divided by the speed of sound in air equals the Mach number or I guess speed of sound in the medium. If it is air, it's 340. So Mach equals object speed divided by sound speed. Okay, let me go back to that in a second. Just to reiterate, the speed of sound is determined by the medium it's in, not by any of these things, okay? Medium, so air, water, atmosphere, which again is just a lighter, less dense form of air, jello, glue, I don't know, um, you come up with one. All right, so that's the medium. Temperature uh, can also affect speed of sound, all right? Okay, so here's our Mach ratio. If you are subsonic, which is less than one uh, Mach speed of sound, so if this is an air, that would be 340, 40, not nine, what the deal is there, 40 meters per second. If you're less than that, you are subsonic. This plane is in a bad spot. He, well, actually technically he's in a good spot because he's not quite transonic. He does not travel the speed of sound, okay? Speed of sound is 340 meters per second or roughly 700 miles per, 750 miles per hour, give or take. The average jumbo jetliner operates around 550 miles per hour. So pretty fast, but not Mach speed. Now, to go above transonic speed or Mach 1.0, you are going supersonic and you need to be a fighter pilot. Now, fighter pilots, uh, fighter planes like the F-A-18 and the F-16, uh, most of these guys can go up to around Mach 2.0, okay? 
if I'm not mistaken, the Raptor, the F-22, can go slightly above that, um, but it's a different it's a different beast like there's uh, and it's this is not an aeronautical engineering class but uh it's really the scramjet engines that they're using uh and the maneuverability that they're looking for that gives the f-22 an advantage and then of course we decided to spend a trillion dollars on the f-35 which i don't know why we were buying a new state-of-the-art jumbo whatever different story anyway the f-22 works just fine so does the rest of the fleet but we spent $1.5 trillion on a new plane, because dang it, we're America. And finally, uh, we have anything that goes hypersonic, that would be 5.0, so 5.0 for hypersonic. And this is an experimental, or what we call an X-plane, and this would be suborbital type flight. Okay, so you're in the upper atmosphere, you're going really, really fast, and all that jazz. And these are powered by scramjets, um, next generation, this is all theoretical, we have not built this yet okay so how fast do you have to go for Mach 5.0 we'll plug it into our formula we have five for our Mach number we want the object speed divided by speed of sound and air again that's 340 not 390 my marker is not working very well so that means we have 340 times 5 equals the speed that we want and that is 1700 I think 340 times 5 is 1700 meters per second that's fast in case you did not know all right that's mock speed all right rounding out sound sound travels as longitudinal waves remember longitudinal waves are those that go the medium travels parallel with the energy okay so if I'm pointing side to side that means the medium and the energy both travel side to side. And it goes into a compression and then a rare fraction. Okay, compression, rare fraction. Volume is a function of amplitude. Remember, on a sound wave or on any kind of wave, uh, volume is amplitude. Okay, this direction, the y axis. Pitch is a function of frequency. So, high pitch low pitch speed of wave is measured by the wavelength times the frequency so speed is wavelength times frequency the doppler effect describes how movement affects frequency so that's a that kind of sound where if we have a frequency getting closer and this is us again my artwork should be framed in the gallery and we have frequency getting big and big and big and then it gets low and low Okay, so that object is going this direction. That's the Doppler effect. The Mach number compares the speed of an object traveling to the speed of sound. So speed of our object divided by speed of sound equals Mach. There is no unit for Mach, it's just a number. Resonance is a natural frequency at which an object vibrates. So that's anything that makes a bell tone or a solid object like we saw a bridge, that vibrates. The speed of sound in air is approximately 340 meters per second. In water, it's 1,482 meters per second, not 237. Objects that are placed in an energy wave of their resonant frequency will vibrate. So if I stick a bell around some air current that's flowing at the same frequency as that bell, so if my air is going at 250 hertz, and I have a bell going that will vibrate at 250 hertz, and I put it close to it, it will start vibrating. At what frequency? You guessed it. 250 hertz. Okay, that is your sound summary in under 14 minutes. Happy days. Your video secret number is um, two. See you in class.